Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are discussing the topic of means plus function claims. This is a somewhat advanced topic for inventors, but I will try to break it down to help understand what it is and why it warrants some caution if these types of claims are used. So first, if you are unfamiliar with what patent claims are, I suggest you first watch my video on patent claims basics, which is my most popular video on my channel, and then come back to this video. You'll get more out of this video if you do that. And I will put a link to that video in the description. So, now let's get started. What is a means plus function claim? I think it may best be shown with an example. So let's look at one. Here is a sample invention for an automatic paper fastener. As you can see at A on the left side, the vibrating alarm clock causes an object to roll off the table B and hit the Ferris wheel C, causing a bunch of other stuff to happen until the bucket F gets heavy and causes the scissors G to cut that string, causing shoe H to hit the stapler I, which fastens the papers together. And by the way, this is not a real invention. This is one in the style of Rube Goldberg, an American cartoonist from the early 1900s who had a propensity for making these types of silly, overcomplicated contraptions for performing a task, but it will work here for the purposes of education. So let's take a look at a chunk of a sample claim. And again, these aren't real claims. This is not a real invention. We are just using it for educational purposes. So we are showing the ending of our sample claim where we have structural elements. We have the bucket, scissors, shoe, and the stapler. So these are all structural elements that we see in the disclosed device. And I will refer to this style of claiming as a structural claim style. Our structural claim recited the elements, including all those shown in the red square. Now, let's see what a means plus function claim for the same device might look like. So we have a second ending for the claim in a means plus function format. Here, we don't mention the boot or the stapler, but instead a means for doing something. Means plus function. What's the function here? Paper fastening. So we have a means for paper fastening. We're not specifically reciting a stapler or a boot. So again, the first claim ending is of a structural claim style. The bottom claim ending is attempting to cover the same thing, but in a means plus function claim style. So, at first glance, the bottom version seems like a much broader claim. It looks like it could provide better coverage because it is not mentioning specific items like shoes and staplers. Recall that to infringe a claim, the infringing thing must have all the elements of the claim. So if the competitor device doesn't have a shoe, it won't infringe our claim. So our bottom claim version doesn't mention a shoe, so that claim seems like it could cover more than the structural style claim, but is that really the case? Let's see what our competitor has done. Here is our competitor device. Instead of a shoe and a stapler, the competitor device uses a trained monkey with the string gently holding up his tail. Now, full disclosure, no monkeys were harmed in the making of this video, and we would never want to promote an invention that would be cruel to animals. So just know that this monkey is well compensated and is never harmed or put in any pain or discomfort during use of this device. Now this monkey has a paper clip, and when the scissors cuts the string, the monkey feels his tail droop down, and he is trained to fasten the papers in response to that. So, do any of our claims cover the competitor device? Well, clearly, the structural claims won't cover this device because the competitor does not use a shoe or a stapler. And yet, the competitor device accomplishes the same goal of automatically fastening a plurality of papers. And plurality is just a fancy way to say more than one. And to fasten papers, we need more than one paper so we can fasten them together. So the bottom claim in the means plus function claim style looks promising, though, because my competitor does have a means for paper fastening. And we have that in our claim. So do any of our claims cover the competitor device? Well, here's the catch. 
the way that means plus function is interpreted by the courts and the patent office is that the means for doing whatever is limited to what is described in the patent application. If I didn't talk about monkeys with paper clips in my patent application, my means plus function claim at the bottom probably won't help me stop that competitor. Now here is a section from the Manual of Patent Examination Procedure discussing how means plus function is interpreted. The key at the bottom in bold is that any means for doing things really needs to be described in a high amount of detail in order to have a chance to support a means plus function claim. So to summarize, a means plus function claim requires adequate description support in the application and an application without sufficient detail will have toothless means plus function claims they probably won't hold up in court to stop a competitor. In fact, many professionals avoid means plus function claiming altogether. Here is a quote from Dennis Crouch, one of the most widely respected bloggers on patent law, who says, means plus function claiming is fool's gold, especially for anyone with a thin, meaning not too much detail, disclosure. The claims appear broad, but are narrowly interpreted and regularly invalidated. So with that said, let's go back to our means plus function claim that we have. And I'm going to now define this as an explicit means plus function claim because we have the phrase right there in the claim highlighted in red. What about this claim at the bottom? What if I say paper fastening module instead of means for paper fastening? Will this claim still be interpreted using the means plus function protocol? Often the answer is yes. So what we see at the bottom may be an implicit means plus function claim style. Even though we don't have the words means plus function in the claim, we are using a generalized word like module, which could trigger the interpretation of the claim as means plus function. So in summary, although the U.S. Patent Office allows means plus function claiming, many professionals avoid it. You can use a mix of structural and means plus function claims in an application. That's one approach. And some cases, it depends on what the invention is, this approach may make some sense. Lots of details in the description are needed for means plus function elements. Again, means plus function claiming isn't necessarily wrong, but it needs a specification, which is the written description section, with a lot of detail in these areas to support this type of claiming. Some of the information in this video comes from the Manual of Patent Examination Procedure, often referred to as the MPEP or MPEP. It is basically a guidebook on how to interpret the patent rules, laws, and results of important court decisions. It is relied upon by both patent examiners and patent professionals. It is available to the public at the link shown here, and I will also put this link in the video description. In particular, this section of the MPEP 2182 discusses this topic in further detail. And this is a fairly complex topic with many corner cases, rules, and exceptions, which were not covered here. So if you want to learn more about this topic, you can check out this section. So I hope you found this to be interesting and helpful. If so, please share, like, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.